good morning students now here is your revised video of chapter 1 that is nutrition in plants so first of all we will learn about what is nutrition so nutrition is actually the process of taking in nutrients nutrients from where we will take the nutrients we will take the nutrients from the food and then we will utilize these nutrients which we have taken from the food into various life processes means our body perform various life processes like digestion respiration excretion etc so for performing these life processes our body need the nutrients from the food material and that process by which the body get the nutrients that is known as nutrition okay now you know that what are the nutrients present in the food items that is the carbohydrates fats proteins vitamins minerals etc okay now depending on the process involved in obtaining and utilizing food different organisms have different mode of nutrition different mode of nutrition means like some organism follow different mode uh, they get the food they get the nutrition from the food by different method and some another organism get the food from some different method so these are the modes of nutrition first mode of nutrition is autotrophic mode of nutrition and the second one is heterotrophic mode of nutrition uh, and now let's discuss what is autotrophic mode of nutrition so you know that the green green plants are known as autotrophs okay why they are known as autotrophs because they prepare their own food with the help of carbon dioxide water chlorophyll in the presence of sunlight okay as they are preparing their own food that's why they are known as autotrophs and that type of nutrition that mode of nutrition is known as autotrophic mode of nutrition because here the plants the green plants are not dependent on the other organism for their food on the other hand there are different organisms like animals humans etc they depend directly or indirectly on the plants for their food that's why they are known as hetero trophs and the mode of nutrition by which they get the food that is known as heterotrophic mode of nutrition that's so so we can conclude with autotrophs takes the food from autotrophic mode of nutrition and heterotrophs take the food from heterotrophic mode of nutrition now next thing is what happens in this mode of nutrition so in the autotrophic mode of nutrition plants take simple in organic components simple in organic components like they take carbon dioxide water okay these are so simple and they just prepare the food with the help of these simple components whereas in the heterotrophic mode of nutrition organisms like animals and the humans take complex organic substances complex organic substances means whose structure is very delicate like plants okay heterotrophs eat either plants or flesh okay so both of these either the plants or the animals or the flesh they are they are having very complex structure and what what happens in this mode they will eat that either the plant or the flesh and then they will convert them into the food by several process so we can conclude that in the heterotrophic mode of nutrition animals take complex organic components then break them and then the body will absorb or assimilate and then utilize it for the life processes okay and this we have discussed that why they are known as heterotrophs because they are dependent on the other organisms which other organisms plants they are either directly or indirectly depend on the plants okay okay now here is a diagram of human cheek cell okay that is human cheek cell 
spine there is a correction in your book this is human cheek cell it is the basic structure of cell now what what you are seeing here there are different different cells this is one cell this is another so actually the whole human body is made up of millions of cells all these singular cells are connected together and then a human body will be formed okay so let's see what is present in a single cell so if you will look then all these cell structures are similar okay now what are present what we call the different parts of these cells so first of all this is the outer outer membrane okay that is known as cell membrane this is one cell and the outer membrane is known as cell membrane okay inside this cell or inside this cell membrane there is a liquid and that liquid is known as cytoplasm the liquid is known as cytoplasm in the center you will see a, a mass or a, we can say there is a structure that is known as nucleus this the structure which is present in the center of each cell is known as nucleus and just like the membrane of the cell is known as cell membrane in the similar way the membrane of this nucleus is known as nuclear membrane so this is all about the simplified structure of a human cell okay now this uh, the, all the parts of the uh, things which i told you like the cell membrane cytoplasm nuclear membrane nucleus all these are the basic structures present in the cell when you will uh, learn in the higher classes about the complex structure of the cell then you will come to know that there are so many organelles so many different organelles are present in a single cell okay now we will learn about the autotrophs you would know very well what are autotrophs they are known as producers okay because they produce their own food with the help of different different uh, organic components okay so what are their organic components the organic components are carbon dioxide water chlorophyll and sunlight and they prepare the food in the form of glucose and give or release oxygen in the atmosphere okay so this whole process of preparation of food is known as photosynthesis that's why photosynthesis is also known as the process of making food by the plants okay students now you know very well that carbon dioxide a plant get from the atmosphere water it get from the soil through roots chlorophyll is uh, already present in the green plants okay and this chlorophyll is actually a pigment a green color pigment which is present in the plant part that is known as chloroplast in the chloroplast uh, these chloroplast are the special cells and in these special cells a green color pigment called chlorophyll is present which is responsible for trapping the sunlight and you know that for any reaction energy is needed and here energy is present in the form of sunlight and the chlorophyll is responsible for trapping this sun energy this solar energy for the for this chemical reaction and by this when the carbon dioxide will combine with water in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll it will give rise to food food in the form of glucose and also release oxygen in the atmosphere okay so here we have also covered the topic that is known as requirements for photosynthesis so for the process of photosynthesis we need carbon dioxide water chlorophyll and sunlight okay and where they are present from where plant get these raw materials you are uh, i hope you know very well by this summarize uh, summarization okay now uh, with all the components and required conditions in the place this whole process of photosynthesis will takes place and food will get prepared in the form of glucose now this food will get transferred to the different parts of the plant and they will get stored in some of the parts of the plant also so uh, like uh, when we eat carrot then in that case in carrot the food get stored in the roots okay when we eat spinach so spinach is actually the leaves of the plant so here the food get 
that is stored in the leaves okay now we can take some another example like potato potato is actually a stem okay it is an underground stem so here the food get is stored in the stem so there are different different parts of the plants where the food get is stored and we eat that part of the plant in which the food get is stored so here the food get is stored in different parts of the plant and the oxygen will get released into the atmosphere which we inhale so this oxygen is a life supporting gas which is very responsible for the survival of animals and humans even the plants on this earth okay now in the previous class you people have uh, discussed you have learnt about the uh, iodine test on leaves by which you will be able to know that where the starch is present is starch is actually a form of food a form of glucose carbohydrate so when you will put the iodine on a particular part then that part will convert it into a blue black in color this shows that the starch is present in that particular part okay so this will show the presence of starch or this will show the preparation of food in the plant part okay now next is synthesis of food other than carbohydrates by plants here the food get prepared in the form of glucose glucose is a type of carbohydrate okay now next we will learn about that how the food uh, other than carbohydrate also prepared by the plants so the starch which is produced during the photosynthesis is a carbohydrate now plant also need nutrients like proteins and fats to grow and function properly because we also get the proteins and fats from plants like if you want to take the proteins then we people eat pulses okay jinko apan hindi mein bolte dals okay so these pulses we get from the plants only and in that pulses protein is present so how the plant get protein so that that protein will get stored in the pulses so for that they take nitrogen to synthesize protein now how they will take nitrogen because the nitrogen which is present in that atmosphere cannot be absorbed by the plants so what will happen that nitrogen which is present in the atmosphere it will first converted into the soluble form by the help of some uh we can say bacteria and the bacteria name is rhizobium what is the name of the bacteria which convert the nitrogen or the atmospheric nitrogen into the soluble form that is rhizobium rhizobium this rhizobium is a bacteria which converts the nitrogen atmospheric nitrogen into a soluble form and this nitrogen will get absorbed will get absorbed by the plants and then it uh, that plant will get easily able to synthesize the proteins other than carbohydrates okay so what is the function of this rhizobium in the plant it fixes the nitrogen okay and convert it into the soluble form now this rhizobium bacteria is actually present in the leguminous roots of leguminous plants okay now nitrogen can also be provided to the plants through fertilizers okay and when these fertilizers will be given to the plants then the plants will get absorbed it through roots okay the fertilizers will get mixed with water and then the roots will absorb the uh, water and it will get the nitrogen so now uh, we have learned all about the autotrophs now our next topic is heterotrophs now heterotrophs you know that heterotrophs are those organisms which depend on plants why i have written only plants over here because if an organism is dependent on any animal also then also that particular on animal is also dependent on plants for their food so basically each and every organism is directly or indirectly depend on plants for their food so heterotrophs are those animals and non green plants why non green plants because in non green plants chlorophyll is not present and if chlorophyll is not present then a plant cannot be able to prepare its own food okay so here in the heterotrophs 
animals and non green plants like bacteria and fungi they will take the nutrition as they cannot be able to pre prepare their own food they depend on green plants for their food okay and this type of nutrition, this mode of nutrition is known as heterotrophic mode of nutrition. Now, according to the mode of nutrition, how the different animals will take the food or what sort of nutritional mode they go through on the basis of that the animals or the organisms are divided into four parts. The heterotrophic organisms are divided into four parts first one is parasites okay so what are parasites i hope you people know the organisms which depend on other organisms okay for their food and shelter means wo khana bhi dusre organism se hi lenge aur rahenge bhi dusre organism par hi okay so that type of organisms are known as parasites and the organism on which these parasites are dependent for their food and shelter they are known as host organism okay and the parasites will grow on the host body as well as take the food or derive its nutrition from the host body only there are certain examples that is cascuta or amarbil and uh, the uh, chrys uh, chrysanthemum dahlia petunia there are different different uh, organisms which are come under this category okay now under this parasites there are certain organisms which are considered as partial parasites why they are known as partial parasite partial means half okay that means there are certain organisms which are not totally dependent on the host organism they are dependent on the host organism for some nutrients only for some few nutrients only they dependent on the other organism that's why they are known as partial parasites so under the partial parasites examples are mistletoe okay mistletoe will grow on the mango and eucalyptus tree and as the uh, this mistletoe bears evergreen leaves evergreen leaves so that means photosynthesis has uh, is just going on continuously that means this mistletoe do not not need the nutrition it only derives it it only leaves on the mango and eucalyptus tree for minerals and water for minerals and water only it leaves on the host organism all the, otherwise it it can prepare its own food now the next type of organism is saprophyte Okay, so the organism which come under this category, they grow on and derive nourishment or the nutrition from dead, dead and decaying organic matter. Means मरे हुए और सड़े हुए animals से ये अपना nutrition लेते हैं. That's why they are known as saprophytes or saprotrophs. Okay. Examples are uh, non-green plants like snow orchid, Indian pipe, some fungi like mushrooms, some bacteria are there. They they just secrete the digestive juices on the dead and decaying matter, and then they just derive the nutrition from the from that dead and decaying organism. Now the third one is insectivora so from the name only you can easily come to know that what are insectivorous organisms these organisms consume the insects as a part of their nutrition okay that means they consume the insect and then only they will derive their nutrition now insectivorous organisms uh, have the special body parts you know the example of pitcher plant or venus flytrap or sundew okay all these are the examples of insectivorous or uh, animals now what they do they have this special structure or a sand is secreted from their body so that the insects cave and then get trapped in the hair like structures which are present on their body and then as soon as the insect get trapped inside them they, they just engulf them so the main purpose of these insectivorous organisms to trap the insect is to just cover or we can say just to derive 
most of the nutrition protein nutrients from the insects okay so as they are capable of photosynthesis but then also they derive most of their nutrients from the insects okay mainly and mainly for nitrogen M mainly for the nitrogen it, uh, insectivorous animals just eat the insects next is symbiotic plants symbiotic plants are those plants which go on the process of symbiosis symbiosis is actually the mutual relationship mutual means do plants ke beech mein proper relationship hota hai proper relationship or interaction means ki dono ek dusre ko fayda karenge theek hai aisa nahi hoga ki koi kisi ek cheez ke liye dusre pe dependent hai aur jo other organism hai uska koi profit hi nahi ho raha both the organisms are interdependent on each other and that type of mutual interaction is known as known as symbiosis okay so the plants which goes into the this mutual inter interrelationship that is known as symbiosis okay and the best example for this symbiotic plant is lichens lichens are the composite organisms composite means they they just form by the composition of two organisms they have one fungal partner and one algal partner algal means algae and you know that algae is are the autotrophs because they are green in color okay so they synthesize their own food organic food by the process of photosynthesis and then they provide it to their fungal partner that means to the fungi and fungi are the saprophytes that means they just take the nutrition water and minerals and then uh, they give to uh, that water and minerals to the algae so in this way they just uh, they they have a mutual interaction and then they will form a um, an organism that is known as lichens and that's why these plants are known as symbiotic plants now there is an another example that is rhizobium legume symbiosis in this the rhizobium bacteria has a like uh, it is capable of fixing atmospheric nitrogen and then it is readily used up by the leguminous plants that's why that really that symbiosis is rhizobium legume symbiosis here rhizobium bacteria and leguminous plants are there in the interaction okay now the last topic is how are nutrients replenished in the soil like when the plants take the nutrition from the soil then how the soil will get back its nutrients so what happens with the time the plants will get uh like uh it will destroy or we can say the nutrients will again come back to the soil once the um, once the plant will get dead or um, it will attain a certain age so with the help of decomposers the nutrients which will be present in the plants or the plants which uh, absorb from the soil that nutrients will again get back to the soil with the help of decomposers now what happens the, what what is the pro, function of decomposers here so decomposers like bacteria and fungi they release a certain chemical substance that is enzymes on the dead plants and waste animal waste okay animal waste like in the forest or here and there you you might have seen animals were there dead animals were just uh here and there on the road or on or in the forest as well as the dead plants were also there so what happens the organism these decomposers will feed on them they release uh, enzymes uh, on their dead bodies of the plants and animals and then that enzymes will release the nutrients which are trapped in their dead bodies which are present in their dead bodies okay and then they will get return it back to the soil okay so so you know that usually crops also require a lot of nitrogen to make protein so after harvest what happens the soil will become deficient of nitrogen deficient in nitrogen nitrogen ki kami ho jati hai okay so what a farmer need farmer need the manures and fertilizers so that it can replenish it can again give back the lost nutrients to the soil and addition of fertilizers Rich and reaches the soil with nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. These three, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, are very important nutrients for the plant. And especially, there is a question, like uh, plants mainly require three nutrients for their growth. What are they? 
so they are nitrogen phosphorus and potassium okay now the another way of adding nutrients back to the soil is growing leguminous crops so what will happen if we will grow the leguminous crops then again there will be the rhizobium bacteria uh, with the leguminous crops and then that rhizobium bacteria will convert that atmospheric nitrogen into the soluble form okay and again the soil will get rich into the nitro uh, nutrients like nitrogen and again again the soil will get replenished with the nitrogen now uh, students there are uh under this chapter there is an activity of making the bread mold in which what you have to do what you will find out in the bread mold activity you will find out saprophytes saprophytes are like the fungi okay so what will happen you will moisten moisten the bread a slice a slice of bread and then you will cap it away from the sunlight and the shade then after few days you will see a green or black color patches will appear on the bread slice so what are that they are the fungi actually they are the saprophytes okay which grow on the bread mold and that is known as bread molds okay so as this we have done with the chapter 1 revision hope you understood and now revise the chapter properly